हेलो मैम हेलो हेलो Yes. Does anybody has any query? Tanu ji, you all have to mute them, please. Yeah, Vinod sir, you have to mute them. Mute them, please. Hey everyone, I think we're just waiting for everyone to join. We can start soon. Just five to seven minutes more, we will start. I got it.
I think we can start now. Yes. So, um, good morning, everybody. We have, I think we are having a lot more uh, people still joining us. Still, uh, we will start. We've already kind of, you know, uh, have had a lot of time to you to wait. So, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Miss uh, Tanvi Chamberlain, first of all. And uh, before that, yes, good morning, everyone. And uh, we welcome you here in this amazing session, which Tanvi Ma'am is going to take now. And I really hope that you all enjoy. So, I'd just like to say, uh, Tanvi Ma'am's introduction is not a small thing, you know. She she is a celebrity artist. She is a celebrity makeup artist. So, uh, there are uh, you know she has over six years of experience and counting into beauty makeup, and she has gained experience in red carpet makeup, fashion makeup, editorial makeup, advertising makeup, commercial makeup, television, lifestyle, bridal makeup, whatnot. So uh, she is based in Mumbai, but available in worldwide. She is so creative and focused. Uh, she she loves to take controls over her, uh, you know, over the job that she's working on, and her exceptional professionalism works wonders. She can provide all the look that you know any uh, brand or any art director would be looking out for the photographer. She just meets the expectations of every uh, person. And uh, she has deep knowledge about fashion, makeup. And she makes that makes her versatile uh, beauty professional who can adapt her skills in every kind of photo shoot. You would also like to know that what all celebrity she has worked with, right? So I would just take names that's Janvi Kapoor, Sonam Kapoor, Priya Kapoor, Deepika Padukone, Priya Tara Sutaria, Bhumi Petnekar, Mithila Palkar, Shikha Talsanya. Then there is uh, Shivani Nandekar, Susan Khan. So these are the kind of uh, celebrities she's worked with. And there are a lot of magazines that she's been you know, uh, featured in. So that's like Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, then there is Razia, Cosmopolitan, Femina Film Fair, then there is Global Spa, Hello, Urban. These are like just names that I would like to take from. She has also worked and movies, you know, with this, these kind of celebrities. And a uh, few movies that I would like to name are Chopstick. Then there's Gunjan Saksena. I think most of you must have watched that film. Then there's Ruhi. There's Dostana too, which is shortly coming. There's Tat. And the kind of brands she's associated with, uh, that's Nika. There's uh, Garnier Hair Color. Then there's Vodafone, Mia by Tanish. Then there's ben Benetton Perfume, Reliance Trends. Then there's um, a lot more actually, you know. And I would also like to tell you that she's also worked with uh, these uh, big personalities, the high profile client that they say. That's Nita Ampani, Isha Ampani, Shlo Kampani, Ananya Barla, Radhika Goenka, Feroza Kuldej. And, you know, this goes on. So, you, her introduction is something like, you know, I can go on and on. But uh, there we have Ms. Chambur, Ms. Chamburkar. Uh, Tanvi ma'am, uh, I'd like to welcome you to this workshop. Uh, Hi. We are really glad that you are here with us and you're going to spare your uh, immense knowledge with uh, our students. So uh, please, please, uh, you can uh, take, take this on and the uh, stage is all yours. Thank you so much for being with us. Hi, hi everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Sukriti. I think that was a great uh, introduction. I was also overwhelmed with him. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy to be here. I mean, I'm just looking at how many people are joining and it's amazing the kind of response uh, you guys have gotten. And I hope that uh, we have an amazing session today. So I think uh, we can start. I'm just going to give you all like a quick introduction. I mean, Sukriti has pretty much said pretty much my entire journey so far. But um, I'll just tell you all in short a little bit about how I started and, you know, how I've reached here today. So I started um, 
about seven years ago, I started with by doing a small course at uh, Fatmo Academy in Bombay. I did about a two month course over there, not knowing whether I want to kind of, you know, do this professionally or whether I just want to, you know, learn and upgrade my skills. But I think after I did the course, I was extremely um, excited and uh, I loved the profession and it was very close to what I'd already studied. I'd studied commercial arts. So this was as artistic only thing is instead of doing it on paper or the computer, I was doing it on faces. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, after that, I went on to, you know, working with MAC Cosmetics for about a year. Uh, that gave me immense um, exposure and a lot of training, which I think I needed. You know, when you get out of um, academies, I think one needs to um, get a lot of practical training. So I think working with uh, an organization like MAC was uh, really good for me because it gave me a lot of exposure. And, uh, you know, I learned most of my basic practical knowledge from MAC. Uh, moving on, I moved on to working with two of the top celebrity makeup artists back then. Uh, I worked with them for about two years. Again, you know, assisting people, I feel is very, very important. Uh, somebody's saying they can't hear me. Am I audible? Okay. So, um, yeah, next I went on to like assisting people again. I It was very, very... Um, it was amazing assisting people because I feel um, the more you can assist people, the better it is. So, I mean, this goes to everyone who is all of you are students and you all are going to like, you know, graduate soon or maybe you all have already graduated. So I think it's very important to, you know, work under somebody because you get to take risks at their cost, uh, which is very important when you're starting off, you know, it, um, Everyone needs to understand how the market is, what is accepted, what is not accepted. So when you kind of assist somebody who's already in the market, it just really helps you understand uh, everything that is going on in the, you know, in the client, I mean, in your industry. So yeah, so I assisted two people. And then after that, I started working on my own. Um, and it's just been one amazing journey. And I think, uh, you know, I also keep upgrading myself. That's another thing which is very important. Uh, anything remotely connected to your field, you should definitely, you know, think of it like an investment that you're putting in whatever money or if it's a free class or whatever it is, always upgrade yourself because I feel um, the more you do that, the better it is for you. You kind of learn so much because everybody has something to teach today somebody who has assisted you tomorrow might you know become equivalent to you and you do a course from them and you're still going to learn a lot so i think uh, yeah that's how i keep upgrading my skills i keep uh, learning something new from different people and yeah so the journey has been great so far and uh, i'm just hoping to continue working till i can um, and yeah, so I'm here. I'm really excited to, you know, uh, help you guys. I've been, we've been like talking about this for a long time now, and I'm really, really happy that this is actually happening. So uh, just to take you through, um, one sec. Yeah, just to take you through what we're going to do today. So I'm going to be uh, basically just telling you a little bit about how things work around a shoot how fashion styling and makeup and hair everything kind of go together hand in hand and then i'm going to be recreating one of my uh, signature looks um, that i normally do on a lot of my celebrity clients on a lot of my brides uh, it's one of my favorite go-to looks which is the brown uh, smoky eye which I, you know i think one celebrity who we do it all the time is dipika so we're going to be recreating that and once we finish the look then we're going to get into like your question answers so i'll be open to answering whatever doubts you'll have whatever queries you'll have please feel free to um, you know let me know and i'll be more than happy to answer those questions so okay so moving on to um, just explaining a little bit of how styling and uh, makeup kind of go hand in hand. So when you plan a shoot, you have, uh, you either have a model or you have, um, you know, a celebrity or any of your high profile clients, when they kind of connect with you, they 
uh, want to put a whole look together. So a fashion styling, I think uh, fashion stylist, I think plays a very, very important role uh, because they are the ones who source the clothes, clothes, they are the ones who kind of source the jewelry and they are the ones who kind of put the look together. So they discuss it with the client. They kind of understand what the client wants, what are the needs of the client. And um, that's how they put like a mood board together uh, where you have a couple of options and then you have hair and makeup references that they feel will go really well with the, uh, that the look that they have in mind. And then this is discussed with the hair and makeup team, it's discussed with the client. And then as a whole team, you kind of, um, you know, lock a look together. Uh, so I think uh, fashion styling, I feel, you know, when I learned makeup, it was very like, okay, this is my, you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is what, uh, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to go do makeup and that's it. But as I've, you know, come ahead in my career, I've realized that fashion, styling, makeup, hair, everything pretty much go hand in hand. Um, as a makeup artist, I still need to have a little aesthetics about fashion, uh, styling, clothes, and also about hair. And likewise, even as a fashion stylist, you need to understand a little bit about, okay, like, you know, if I'm giving a lot of print on the clothes, then the makeup needs to be slightly cleaner. Or if I'm doing a solid color, then do one solid pop of color either on the lips or do some solid eyes. So this kind of aesthetics you need to kind of understand even if you're like fashion students, I think um, you need to kind of be updated with the makeup trends, the hair trends, uh, what all is going around in fashion, jewelry. I think it's all kind of hand in hand. So it's very, very important to understand. And I think that understanding only comes uh, when once you'll graduate, it's not like you graduate and you immediately will start freelancing. I mean, if you get that, nothing like it. But a great way to kind of start off is by uh, doing test shoots. I think test shoots are something which is very, very uh, essential um, and necessary when you kind of you know graduate and it really grow you know helps you grow as an artist so i'll just explain in short what a, a test shoot is it's basically a makeup artist a stylist a photographer a hairstylist and a model kind of join hands and they do a shoot on a barter basis so you think of a theme you think of you know mainly a stylist and a photographer kind of work together so if they have something in mind they have a mood board in mind you present it to the rest of the team and everybody works for free of cost and it's more like to build your portfolio so this is a time you kind of uh, understand because there is no client involved there is no money involved you are kind of you know doing it more out of you know goodwill so it kind of is a learning curve for you you learn from the stylist you see how they are thinking you see what is what works in front of the camera what doesn't work so that helps you grow uh, aesthetically likewise if you're a stylist you kind of see what makeup works what doesn't work for glossy eyes not glossy eyes glossy lips everything and because there is no you know time restriction there is no client involved there's no money involved it is very open for everybody to kind of um, you know understand each other's aesthetics so I think doing test shoots is very very important so all of you out there who have maybe graduated or who are going to graduate I would highly recommend that you guys uh, consider putting a portfolio together and while putting a portfolio together don't only focus on your clothes or what styling you are doing make sure you'll focus that you have a good makeup artist you have a good hairstylist a good model and a good photographer on board only then your image might look nice a lot of times it's happened that you know i feel like i've done fantastic makeup but maybe the stylist is not up to the mark or maybe the hair is not up to the mark and the whole image doesn't look as great uh, so it's very important to work as a team. It's very important to discuss everything and to be like, okay, we like this, we don't like this, this is what we should do, this is what we shouldn't do. So uh, getting a team together, working together, understanding aesthetics is very important. It'll help you when you actually start freelancing and doing paid jobs. It'll really give you an insight on, you know, what works and what doesn't work. So yeah, this is just a little brief of um, how fashion styling and you know makeup and hair, everything goes hand in hand. If you all have any questions about this, please uh, feel free to either let Sukirti know or put it maybe in the chat and 
towards the end of the session we can maybe you know i can elaborate on any points that you want moving on to the makeup uh, like i said i'm going to be creating my signature uh, brown smoky eye i think uh, this is a look that over a period of time i think i've i've realized that it is my signature look and i love doing it and uh, i think it looks good on most indian people i think all of us in india love to enhance the eyes i think all of us have beautiful eyes so enhancing that has always been great and uh, i think it's something that goes with most clothes unless you're wearing something that demands you know something different otherwise i think brown smoky is pretty much that goes on everything so uh, let's get started i'm going to just take you through the process not too much in detail because uh, um we may not have that much time but i'm going to try and explain as much as i can if at all you'll have doubts please make a note of them and at the end of the session uh, you know we will definitely get into it yeah cool so while doing makeup i'm going to tell, take you through it how i do it um uh, so if there's anything that you all you know have doubts on then we will talk about those at the end of the session yeah okay so uh when i do my makeup the first thing i do is skin prep i think skin prepping is very very important uh most people don't do it so let me tell you even when you're doing your own makeup it's very important to prep your skin you don't have to have an elaborate a uh, procedure jahan pe you're doing like 10 20 you know steps and uh, then you you know lose interest in doing it keep it very simple very clean uh, use products that suit your face so i'm going to start by using a moisturizer i think using a moisturizer that suits your skin is very important so just going to use a little bit of moisturizer and i normally tend to even when i'm doing it on my clients i tend to just massage it into my face or onto their face because that kind of just helps plump up the skin a little bit so again make sure that you know uh what your skin type is before investing in a cream next i'm going to apply an eye cream equally important we all neglect our eyes um I don't know why but we all tend to neglect our eyes nobody really takes care of their eyes so I'm just going to apply a little cream under the eyes especially when you're going to be applying concealer you want to make sure that your eyes are you know well hydrated and well moisturized so that you avoid cracking or you avoid any kind of creasing caking all of these so yeah this is the eye cream uh somebody's asking for the brands what i'm going to do is maybe i'll uh send out a list to sukirti and we can maybe just you know uh put all the brands out there but i'll just tell you as i'm going this is the cream is by bobby brown it's their hydrating eye cream next i like to uh start with my eyes even when i'm doing it on my clients whether it's a bride or a celebrity or a model i always start with my eyes because i feel when you do your eyes there's a lot of fallout so you don't want to do your base first and then have fallout so you do with you do your eyes first if there's any fallout you clean it out and then move on to the face so we're going to go first with the eyes for that i'm going to start with the concealer uh the concealer i'm using is a nars concealer okay and i'm just going to take a little bit on a synthetic brush and just apply it on my eyelid the reason i'm doing this is all of us have a little discoloration on our eyelids so you just want to form a clean base before putting any eye shadow onto the eyes do the same on the other side Okay. So this way you just form a clean base for any eye shadow to stick on. Next I'm moving on to a loose powder by Laura Mercier. 
a translucent powder, I'm going to dab it off and then just set the concealer. As a rule, remember any, any cream product you use, it needs to be set with a powder. Whether it's a cream eyeshadow, whether it's a cream blush, whether it's a cream concealer, everything needs to be set with a powder. Especially in India, the climate is such that you need to set all your cream products. Yeah. Once you have the base, now we're going to move on to actually doing the eyes. Um, so we're going to start by using a brown pencil. This pencil is by Maybelline. It's a brown chocolate pencil. The reason I like it because it's a really, really nice shade of brown. It's a bit like reddish brown. So I'm going to start by drawing a line very close to the lash line. Don't worry about it being neat. We are anyway going to smudge it out. So make it slightly thick. Thicker more on the outside and thinner on the inside. Then I'm going to use a small brush like this to blend out the liner. But you're only going to blend out the top portion of the liner. Don't blend out here. You'll only blend out on top. You basically want to just smudge it out and soften the liner. You just want to soften the top part. You don't want to lose the definition near the eye and go all over your lid. Make sure that you don't go above your lid. So just for you all to understand, this is, your, this is your lash line, this is your lid, and this line here you see is your crease, and this space here is above your crease, yeah? So now when you're smudging this, you only want to stick to your lid. You don't want to cross your lid, okay? And these pencils, you can smudge it and then once you give it some time, they set, then you don't need to, then you won't get time to smudge it. So just to show you the technique, once you do a line, you only want to smudge the top part of the line. Okay. And not the bottom part. This is near your lash. You don't want to use a definition there. You just want to smudge the top part. Okay. We're going to do the same on the other eye. So if you are not able to do a straight line, don't feel free to just tug a little bit so that you can create a line. Like I said, again, you don't have to be very neat because we're anyway going to smudge it out. Somebody is asking which one is the crease. So when you look straight, can you see this line that is created here? This is your crease. Okay. You just want to go all over your lid. Okay, the next step is to take your eyeshadow palette. Now I'm using the Anastasia one. You can use any palette that has browns in it. And I'm gonna use a light brown color like this. Okay, it's, it's, it's like a transition brown, they call it. And I'm gonna use a small blending brush like this. Okay, this is what we're going to put on top in the lid and in the crease. You tuck it in and you basically go in a swiping back and forth motion. Whenever you're applying eyeshadow, make sure you keep building it up versus putting one a lot of color in the first go itself. 
because that way you will get a more blended out effect versus having like a blob of color yeah so and a technique is never use a brush so close because when you use it so close you're putting a lot of pressure always use it as hold it as far as possible and your hand should be as light so the pressure you're putting on a scale of 1 to 10 should be about 2 yeah and keep building it don't put everything in one go because you want to have a nice well blended look versus just stark lines of color do the same on the other eye Also, always keep checking in the mirror. Kaha pe color jada hai, kam hai. It's makeup at the end of the day. Uh, you know, if you make an error, you can always clean it up. So don't be scared about applying the color. One sec, someone's asking, ma'am, I'm just gonna, whatever I see, ma'am, we have to roll the brush in a circular motion. Not circular. I have I whatever you find comfortable that the but the first way to do it when you're starting off is to go in back and forth motion like how a viper would go so this way it will help you even blend out the product yeah now this is your transition color now we're going to go to the mid color we're going to take this one okay it's slightly darker than what we've used right now. And we're going to use it on our lid. So if you see, this, this is really dark. This will be a mid color. And then this will be lightest to blend everything out. Yeah. So this is the mid color that you want to apply on your entire lid. The same, the technique that we're using can be used for any color you want. You can do this with a brown, a gray, a black, a blue, green, any color. It's the same technique. The technique remains the same. It is just the colors that will change. Once we put the mid color, then you want to take your the brush that we used to smudge, the small one, and you want to take the darkest brown, okay, and deposit the color where we drew the brown liner, okay. Then you take a clean brush, a clean small brush like this, and you just basically want to blend everything out so you don't have any kind of dark brown, you know, and light. It should all look like one. So you just want to buffer everything out so that it looks like one. Next, we're going to move on again with a clean brush. Okay but a slightly fluffy brush like this. Okay, this is just to, it's a clean brush. There's no color on this. We are just gonna soften all the edges so that it's a very, very well blended look. Yes, uh, Dipali, it does work on small eyes as well. 
uh, but on small eyes then i would suggest that you stay away from darker colors like black you only stick to browns and grays and you know any other color but you definitely can use and for hooded eyes as well people with hooded eyes like see if you notice on my one eye i have a slightly hooded eye where this lid is heavier than my uh, eyelid so you can still achieve the same thing all you need to do is you need to go above your hooded eye versus this which already has a crease so people who have hooded eyes you have to create your crease people who have the crease naturally you just have to apply it in the crease but it is possible on any eye shape yeah next i'm going to now we have to add definition to the eye so i'm going to take a black pencil okay this one is by revlon and what we did with the brown we need to do the same okay so we go very close to the lash line take the same blending brush and a black eye shadow and then you blend it out like how we did it for the brown yeah so this will give you definition versus this eye which doesn't have any definition so you do the same and again you just blend out the top of the liner yes ye dark skin pe bhi acha lagega i think uh, browns and blacks are colors which jo sub indian skin pe jata hai so don't worry about uh, you know it not looking good on dark skin i think it looks beautiful on dark and you know warmer skin tones so don't worry brushes that i'm using are this brand called pack cosmetics they are available in india on uh nike or they even have stores in bombay again to just buffer everything out the liner brand that i'm using is by revlon and the other brown one that i used was by uh maybelline again i'm taking the middle brown and just going over the black so that it's a little more blended whatever you have above your crease should be as blended and soft as possible taki when your eyes are open it just looks like gradation and not blobs of color so always make sure that crease ke upar jo bhi color you are applying that is nicely blended out of a brush again a clean brush and you just want to blend this out yeah just going to do the same on the other eye this buffer is very important jab buffer kar rahe ho you have to buffer out the edges don't buffer out all the product you've put here otherwise you're going to 
lighten everything up it is you just want to buffer out the last bit of the color okay so make sure you buffer just that Now I'm happy with how the upper lid looks. Now we will go on to the lower lid. We apply the same method for the lower lid as well. So we're going to start with the brown pencil. Under, I'm not putting it in my waterline. I am putting it in my lash line. Two type ke lines hote hai. One is your waterline, jo under hota hai, and one is your lash line. Up also. You have your waterline and then you have your lash line. Okay. So I'm going to apply the brown on in my lash line. And don't forget to join it to your upper line. Okay. We're going to take. Going to take a very small brush. So just give me one second. Brushes are very very important. So I'm trying to find the right brush so I can show you the difference it makes. It. So I'm using a really, really small brush like this. Again, it's from Pack Cosmetics. The smaller you use, the more control you have. Okay. Uh, I am going to be applying concealer, but like I told you, I'm going to finish the eyes first. I'm going to use a lighter brown, mix it a little bit with the light, uh, medium brown, and then smudge this liner. You can make it slightly thick if you want, depending on how much thickness you like. Some people don't like it very thick. Some people like it very, very thick. Like Deepika loves it very, very thick. So for her, we make the bottom line extremely thick. I'm keeping it medium so that you know how it looks. Then I'm going to take the, the darker brown and I'm just going to go over the liner that we created. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Also, jab niche ka kar rahe ho, yaha pe it has to be slightly thick and when you go inside, it has to be slightly thinner so that your eyes look like nice almond shape and they don't look round. And be patient while doing your eyes. I think eyes, once you enhance your eyes, your entire makeup looks really nice. Uh, so make sure when you're doing something as elaborate as a smoky eye, make sure you're spending, you know, a good amount of time to smudge it out, to create the look, and you're not in a hurry to, you know, finish the look. Take a little bit of the dark color and just place it in. Yeah, next thing I'm going to take my black and I'm now going to go in my waterline. And then take a slightly fluffier brush, small only, but slightly fluffier compared to the first one. And you merge the brown and the black. So they shouldn't look different from each other. The brown should just merge into the black. Sorry, the black should merge into the brown. 
you take a little bit of your browns and smudge it out. Soften all the edges. The key to a smoky eye is to have everything very well blended. The minute you see lines and you see strong color is when it doesn't look nice. But when everything is nicely smudged out, it looks beautiful, whether you've done it in the right method or no. Just make sure that everything is well blended. Same thing we're going to do on the other eye. You always want to clean whatever extra product is there, either on the back of your hand or on a tissue. And I'm going to do the same thing. Again, take a little bit of brown. And buffer it out. Yeah. Okay. Next thing, which is very, very important. We are going to be curling our lashes and we're going to apply mascara. So while curling your lashes, we still haven't... Um, put liner on your top line. So an easy way to do it is, you take your, this is a mascara, I mean, this is a curler. Iske upar ek band hota hai, a rubber band. You have to take your black eye pencil and you go over the rubber band. So when you curl your lashes, this will automatically fill the color on your waterline. You place this on your eyelid. Be very careful with the curler. And you'll be able to see your hair strand through the curler. And that's when you start pulsing. You have to pulse about three to four times for your lashes to get properly curled. See? Yeah? You do the same. For the other eye. Now you see the color is fully filled inside. Do the same method. Yeah. Sorry. Next we're going to take a mascara. I'm using a MAC one. Uh, ideally, don't put a mascara first and then curl your lashes because you might uh, end up breaking and damaging your lashes. So always curl the lashes first and then apply mascara. Okay. Always take off the excess. Tuck it into your roots and then wriggle from roots to tips. When you wriggle it, it makes sure that every coat of your lashes, I mean, every uh, lashes is coated with mascara. Do the same on the other side. And for your inner lashes, you want to use the tip and just comb the, comb the lashes out. the same on the other eye. You want to not take any extra product and whatever is remaining, you just want to do it on your bottom lashes. Yeah, so the eyes are complete. You can see that there is enough definition, there's enough color Oh, there's enough gradation. So eyes are done. Now we will move on to the skin. Um, so for the skin, we've already prepped the skin. I will first start by concealing. So I will use my corrector. 
दिस इज एन ऑरेंज करेक्टर सबको यहाँ थोड़ा डार्क डार्कनेस आता है सो यू जस्ट वॉन्ट टू करेक्ट दैट लिटिल बिट ऑफ डार्कनेस you want to apply the corrector but apply the corrector only where you have darkness the minute you put it on the rest of your face it will start looking very orange then i take a beauty blender you can even use a brush but i somehow like using the sponge because jo bhi tumhara excess product hota hai it kind of is taken care of and you just want to blend it out kisi kisi ko around the mouth also we have slight discoloration so you would want to even apply the corrector there i feel most indian people have a little discoloration around the mouth little discoloration on the forehead so halka sa you can apply the corrector before applying your concealer or your foundation and when you are uh, using your sponge you just want to use a patting motion not too much of rubbing because jo bhi product lagaya hai wo nikal jayega uh you can wet the beauty blender um i personally don't like to wet it but most people wet the beauty blender take out all the excess water and then use it i just normally use it dry or sometimes i use a setting spray and i use it on my face the brand of the corrector is cover effects Okay. Once we put the corrector, now we move into the foundation. So I love my skin looking nice and glowy, um, and so I like to use a strobe cream, which is like an illuminating um, strobe cream, which gives you a lot of luminosity. So I mix it with my foundation. My foundation is by Maybelline. Okay. Again, we're going to take a little on my hand. I take very little foundation. Okay, I don't think you need more than this. Your main thing you should really invest is in getting a good concealer. I think concealer is more important than a foundation. Okay, then I'm going to mix a little bit of the stroke cream. Um, we will talk about correctors and all in a little more detail in the end. so i think hold on and somebody asked me about oxidization oxidize oxidization normally happens when you are using a wrong shade if you are using a shade lighter than you tab oxidization hone ke chances hai having said that there are some foundations which have oxidization power in it so they oxidize irrespective of what shade you use so i would suggest when you are buying a foundation apply it for a while keep it on for your on your face for about half an hour and then you can invest in it yeah now for the i'm using a synthetic a brush taking the foundation and i'm just dabbing it on my face don't forget your neck guys people always forget their neck so don't forget to apply it on the neck also apply a little under the eyes aur jo bach jata hai that i apply on my forehead now again i'm going to go with my beauty blender and i'm going to blend everything out you can even blend everything out with the brush but i just feel that the beauty blender uh gives a very very uh, natural finish to the skin which i really really like 
also remember um, when you're choosing a foundation, if you go slightly warmer, it's good, but never go lighter. Always either go your skin or go slightly warmer, like half a shade warmer. Always match it on your chin, never on your hand, never on any other part of your body. When you're matching a foundation, it always has to be on your chin. Okay, once you've blended everything out, just one second, feel the light is, yeah. Once you've blended everything out, you want to move on to the concealer. Again, I'm using the same NARS concealer that we used on top of my eyes. Okay. Just under the eyes. Now I have problem mainly under my eyes. So I will apply it there. If you feel you need it around your mouth, you can apply it around the mouth. If you feel you want to apply it on your forehead, you can apply it on your forehead. Just remember one quick tip. When you're buying a foundation, you're matching it to your skin, to your jawline. When you're buying a concealer, you are matching it to the problem area. So if you want to say correct your under eyes you are matching the concealer to your under eyes if you are trying to fix your discoloration around the mouth you are going to match it to your mouth okay so or if you have spots or pigmentation Joby tumara problem area hai, your concealer has to match that not your skin tone because a lot of people come saying ma'am i'm so fair but why is my concealer dark you are fair but if you have dark circles you will need something to correct that yeah Okay, then now I'm going to blend it out. Okay. And when you're using concealers, foundations, always start with a little bit. And if you have a need, then you keep building on. Never go in with a lot of foundation or concealer or any product. Okay. So I'm going to, next I'm going to use a lighter concealer just to brighten the inner corners and the outer part of my face. So this automatically gets nicely lifted. Okay, जो बच जाता है उसको center पे, nose पे, chin पे. Okay, next an important step would be powder. Like I said, you have to have to apply a powder to set any of your cream products in a place like India. Now I have dry skin, so I don't really sweat a lot on my face, but definitely because I've put so much product under my eye, I will definitely have to set my under eyes. I'm using a loose powder and I will use a brush like this. Okay. And take a little bit of the powder, dust off the excess always and press it under my eyes. Also press it from out to in. So that your creases and all of your creases are removed. The brand of powder I'm using is Laura Mercier. But you have lots of powders that are even available in India. Um, you can even just use those. And around the nose and a little bit on the forehead. Whatever is left, I will dust it off. I don't apply on my cheeks because I have dry skin. But if you have oily skin, please make sure that you set your entire makeup, even your face, your chin, everything. Yeah. Next is contour. After you apply, jab tum foundation, concealer, sab kuch apply kar deti ho, tumhara face ek blank canvas ho jata hai. So you have to bring back 
all the normal uh, shadows and highlights that are there on your face. So we are going to start by contouring. I'm using a contour cream stick. This is by the brand called Smashbox. And I'm going to suck my cheeks in. And if you see this natural shadow here, that's where I'm going to contour. Okay. And halukasa on the jawline. Now there are lots of people who don't need contour. Unka chehra already bought, you know, well-defined hair, jawline is well-defined. So don't contour their face, otherwise it will give an illusion of a smaller face. So be very uh, careful. Matlab, you know, koi steps dekh liye, wo har, chi, har jan pe karna hai ya, ka, you know, zaruri hai. It's not, like, it's not important to do it on everybody. So just make sure that you see the person's features and then accordingly apply the product. Contour shade, one sec, let me check. Uh, contour shades should be slightly Contour brand is Smashbox. Yeah. So if you see halka sa shadow yaha aagya hai cherry pe, if you feel you need more, you can go back with the product and blend it out a little more. Yeah. Same on the other side. Always remember, if you are full chehre ko powder karne wale ho, then all your cream products like your contour, your everything that you, you are doing uh, with cream needs to be done before you set it with powder. Okay. All the brushes I'm using are from Pack. You get a full face and eye set. You can just buy that. Now I'm going to contour my face with the powder. So I'm using a contour powder by MAC. It's more like a bronzer. Okay. And I'm going to go over with wherever I've used the cream. Again, apply, take off the excess. Apply on the jaw. And when you're contouring, I know both logo ko contouring pasand hai, but remember photos and uh, you know shoots ke liye, it works when you use very dark contour, very dark lines. But when you're doing it on yourself, uh, you know, use a slightly uh, lighter hand because you don't want people looking at you with harsh lines, you know, you want to keep it as natural and as you know minimum as you can so make sure that you use the contour very lightly when you're doing it in person yeah how to minimize texture if you have open pores you get pore fillers that you can put on your open pores otherwise if your skin has natural texture then it is best to work with a dermatologist they will help you work on the texture of the skin because makeup can't really you know take care of that Next, we're going to apply a blush. Okay. I'm using a blush by this brand called Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm using, since our eyes are really strong, we're not going to use too much color on the cheeks. I'm using a, like a nudish uh, shade, coral nudish shade on my cheeks, just to give a little color. You don't want it to be very, very pink or very orange or any other color. It has to be very natural. So you take a little bit on your brush, dab off the excess 
and apply your blush always upwards okay uh i used a contour powder because i used a cream uh cream stick and like i said you have to set the cream with a powder but you can go directly with the powder and skip the cream step now i like to apply my blush upward because then it just gives your face a slightly lifted look versus you know making it on the apples of your cheeks where it will make your face look round so always apply it upward and whatever remains you apply that on the apples Sec. The light is, I think, is this better. Yeah. Okay. जब अभी मैं blush लगाती हूँ, I always like to go over with the sponge that I used. इस पे already थोड़ा foundation लगा हुआ रहता है, and I like, just like to buffer everything out, ताकि again वो सब well blended लगे. and everything is just not very stark because ye sab camera pe bahut acha lagta hai but you want to do makeup also that look good when you are in person koi tumhare samne khada hai they should look at it and be like oh it's looking nice if you have so many harsh lines everyone's going to look like a clown so always make sure everything is blended then we're going to apply a highlighter highlighter is again something that really really adds a lot of uh, value to the face so i'm going to apply a highlighter i'm using a highlighter palette by nars okay but you get lots of highlighters in the market there is one by um i think mac it's called hush and there is a shell and this copper tone any cream highlighter again use cream highlighters they are easier to use you can blend it out if you make any errors you have more time to play with it so i normally apply a blush with my finger i think it's the best it gives you a lot of play time i warm the product up and then apply it on the high planes of my cheek yahan nahi lagana hai yahan nahi lagana hai jahan pe tumhari cheekbone ki haddi hai that's where you want to apply it because when you turn see this is where the light will hit so you want to apply it right over there and apply it in a slightly c shape okay same thing on the other side don't go very close to your eye also it has to be on the high planes of your cheek a little bit on my nose the shade i'm using from the palette is a a shade called orgasm a little you want to put on your cupid's bow and a little on the chin jinki skin oily hai avoid using it on the areas that आर ऑयली अदरवाइज ये सब कुछ एकदम ऑयली लगने लगेगा वन थिंग दैट आई मिस वॉज टू कॉन्टोर माई नोज एम जस्ट क्विकली गोन कॉन्टोर इट आई एम नॉट गोन डू अ क्रीम कॉन्टोर आई डोंट नीड टू मच कॉन्टोरिंग ऑन द नोज जस्ट गोन टेक द पाउडर कॉन्टोर एंड यू सी द नेचुरल कॉन्टोर ऑफ द नोज आई एम जस्ट गोन फॉलो दैट and the last but pretty important step is the eyebrows never skip the eyebrows i think it is very very important to do the eyebrows because now if you see i finished the face 
but like something looks incomplete around the eyes it's because the eyebrows are not done so it's very important to pehle i'll brush my eyebrows up with a spoolie this is a spoolie brush so i'll brush my eyebrows up with a spoolie brush both my eyebrows and then i'm going to take an eye shadow powder this is by anastasia beverly hills and i'm always use a brown shade never use a black for your eyebrows always always use brown theek hai i'm going to take the darker shade on an angle brush and whenever you're starting always start with the outer corner and then jo bach jata hai you go with the go into the inner corners if you do it directly you are going to um, make your eyebrows look like tattoos so you want to start with the outer corner jo bhi shape you want to achieve you create that shape and jo bach jata hai like i said you want to go in the inner corner now here i can see there's still a gap so i'm going to go back in and just fill that gap the reason you want to use a uh, brown and not black is because the minute you use black your eyebrow hair is always slightly darker so if you use a black it will become very very dark and naturally most indian people have dark brown hair very few people will have jet black even if you have it has to be one shade lighter than your hair always so that's why we use a brown अगर एट सम पॉइंट यू फील दैट ओ माय आईब्रोज आर लुकिंग वेरी डार्क मुझे नहीं अच्छा लग रहा है यू टेक द स्पूली एंड यू जस्ट ब्रश इट अपवर्ड जो भी एक्स्ट्रा प्रोडक्ट रहेगा कलर रहेगा इट विल टेक इट आउट या आईब्रोज आर डन लास्ट थिंग इज द लिप्स ओके आई हैड सम लिप बाम ऑन टेक दैट ऑफ and i'm going to use a liquid lipstick since my eyes are really dark i'm going to be using a nude lipstick on the lips always remember ki jab tum makeup kar rahe ho you have to focus on either your eyes or your lips so now since i've done my eyes up i'm going to use a nude color if i would have done nude eyes i would have gone with a stronger color so i'm going to go in with this nude lipstick by shambord Uh, if you have dark lips your best tip would be to use pencils lip pencils are your best friend uh tum jo bhi lipstick lagana chahti ho uske pehle there is one lip pencil by mac it's called spice it works beautifully to uh, even out any discolored lips so you go all over your lips with the pencil not in this motion you go it go in this motion basically it will even out your lip color and then you can apply whatever lipstick you want it will be a beautiful base for your for your lips yeah now just to finish before we finish i would like to darken the pore a little bit so 
So I'm going to go and darken my kajal. And because of the concealer, there was a little bit of, you know, like a stark line that was created. So I want to go back and create like a more smudged out effect. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go back again with that light brown and middle brown and just blend out everything. So it looks a little more smoked out. Do the same on the other eye. And yeah, that's the final look. Uh, I know it looks like a lot of uh, steps. But when you actually do it and get a hang of it, it's very, very easy. You just need to have a couple of products together and uh, yeah, you should be sorted. So I think this is the final, final look. And you see where your eyes automatically stand out when you leave your lips really, really nude. If I had put a dark lip here, there would have been a lot of clash. So make sure that you focus on one element of the face and not do everything. So whatever you like, just focus on that. I love doing my eyes up. So even when I'm going out, personally, I love to do my eyes. So yeah, uh, I think we are good to maybe start the question and answers. It's, we have about half an hour, 45 minutes to maybe do that. So Sukriti, should we uh, maybe get into the q a oh everyone's loving the look i'm i'm very very happy that you're loving it and i think you guys are going to get like a recorded version of this so i would love it if you guys could uh you know try the look and uh, do tag me do tag i and ifd and if you have any doubts i will be more than happy to help you all Uh, there are a lot of questions that are coming. Uh, Sukriti, is there a particular way you would want me to just go through these questions or I can just randomly pick and answer a few? Because I'm not able to... Uh, one sec, let me... So Divya is asking me, uh, this is a nice question. Could you share something about your entry in the film industry? As far as I know, it takes a lot to get into the industry. Could you please share your struggle? So I wouldn't really call it a struggle. I would call it a learning experience. Um, yes, it is really hard to get into the industry. But I think when I started off as a makeup artist, I didn't really care whether I want to work with celebrities or whether I want to work with brides. I just wanted to do makeup. So I think try and have the same uh, motto ki bas mujhe makeup karna hai. I mean, styling karna hai. Whatever your line is, so just focus on doing that. A thing that helps is the test shoots that I was talking about that really helped me put my work out there because if you have professional pictures put together as a team, as a stylist, makeup artist, photographer, hairstylist and a model, uh, it makes a huge difference. Your, you know, your portfolio automatically starts looking uh, very, very professional. So definitely work on, you know, getting a portfolio together because people are, this industry is huge. People are looking for new talent. People are looking to get new people on board. So um, trust me, there's enough work for everyone. So I wouldn't really call it a struggle. It's just a learning experience. And I personally feel when you're starting off, there is no work which is small or big. Be open to taking up every job that comes your way because her job say you will take something out of it that will help you in your next job. So that is something I would say you should definitely keep in mind and uh, it will help your struggle be a little less. So, yes. So, ma'am, um, uh, there are a lot of questions, honestly. So I'll yeah. let you... Uh, 
out so that you can answer them. Uh, and and uh, I would like to apologize to the students if ca in case you know we miss out on the question. So please uh, don't worry. You can always send in your questions to me. I will uh, uh, forward it to uh, the ma'am and get the answers. Yes. So uh, this somebody who's asking, uh, could you please suggest me the best makeup colleges in India? So uh, there's one question and there's one more which says, how did you land a job at Mac Cosmetics? Do they need certain kind of skills or portfolio for that? Uh, so first answer would be, uh, there are a couple of schools in Bombay that I would recommend. Fatmu, unfortunately, uh, isn't um, functioning at the moment, I think because of lockdown, they've stopped. But there are a couple, uh, there's Navrita Soni's uh, School of Hair and Makeup. Then there is where I learned from, uh, that is um, um, Sandhya. I used to assist her, Sandhya Shekhar. She started her own academy. There is also a makeup artist in Delhi called Meera Sakrani. She also teaches makeup. So there are a few, I can maybe uh, list down a couple uh, and send it to Sukriti and she can share it with y'all. Secondly, for Mac, you don't really need any kind of a portfolio. All you need to know is your basics. Um, and uh, you, they have an interview round. You need to be able to do the interview round. And after the interview round, they have a skill test where you will have to do a look on your model. And yeah, that's your only walk-in. So even if you're a self-learned makeup artist and you feel you can achieve the look, uh, you're pretty much good to apply to MAC. They don't really have any kind of uh, criteria. Uh, as long as you have some background, because whatever training you get as far as the stroke is concerned is any way given to you when you join. So, yeah. Uh, there's one question. Does makeup brand depends on the skin type of celebrity model client or is it chosen by the makeup artist? Uh, makeup brand doesn't really depend on any, like any particular person. The makeup product you're using, the type of product, like say for example, if my client has oily skin, I can't use a foundation that is used for dry skin because then it's going to make the skin even more oily. So I think it depends, the product depends on your skin type of the person, but not the brand. You can use any brand. And I personally feel you can make any brand work. You don't have to go with like big brands. I have tried and used as many local brands as possible. And it does the same job that a expensive brand will do. So brands really don't matter. There's another question. Uh, should we use sunscreen in preparation of the skin before makeup? Uh, yes, ideally you should use a sunscreen, but it's a bit tricky with sunscreen because um, sometimes the sunscreen, when you apply layers and layers of products on top of the sunscreen, they start flaking. So uh, what I would recommend is if you are applying makeup and going out in the sun, uh, you get a lot of uh, spray sunscreens now in the market. Uh, like for example, Body Shop has one which has SPF of 45. You can apply that as a setting spray on top of your makeup. Versus, and you can apply maybe one layer before your makeup and then apply it on top of your makeup. But applying sunscreens in you know cream forms can be a bit tricky. So yeah. So uh, there are the these two questions I'd just like to merge it up because they're quite similar. So okay. one is uh, which eyeshadow is best for beginners and there's another one which says basic party makeup kit. So uh, maybe you could say something for the beginners who could have a makeup kit basic which can be used. Um, so basic eyeshadow nowadays are lots of uh, brands in the market to name a few. Uh, there's Makeup Revolution, there is NYX, there is uh, K by Katrina. All these palettes are very, very inexpensive and they always have, I think I have one. Uh, okay, I'll maybe send a picture to you, uh, to Sukriti. So they all have lots and lots of colors. So you don't need to buy multiple uh, palettes. I think any of these brands, and they are very well-priced. They are between, I would say 500 to 1000. 
uh, or 500 to 2000 which is not very expensive and they last you for very long uh, as far as the party uh, makeup kit is concerned you do have eyeshadow palettes which have a mix of day colors and your night colors so investing in a palette like that is very useful you need a black pencil a brown pencil uh, a nice blush on like I would say don't go into like three four shades of blush on try and get one shade which will pretty much go with any of your looks so something like I've used it's a little more on the nudish brownish side so any makeup I do whether I do a red lip or whether I do eyes or any Indian eyes anything this blush pretty, pretty much goes on everything so getting a blush like that which will go works and even lipsticks maybe get two lipsticks one I would say a brighter color like if you like bright pink so if you like bright red uh, you can buy that and one I would say a neutral day color since you want to do something in the day then you can apply the color in the day so yeah just these basic things should be sorted uh, there's another question uh, ma'am what's the major difference between celebrity makeup and bridal or educational makeup uh I think uh, the main difference is the amount of makeup you apply because now when you do celebrities, everyone's going into the more clean makeup, less is more, not too much um, foundation, you know, just use wherever you need to use it. So I think that's the main difference that I would say. Otherwise, when you're doing eyes or you're doing lips, it's pretty much what you're doing even with your brides. But I just feel with brides, because you're wearing Indian outfits, you're wearing Indian jewelry, you to complement that, you tend to apply a little more of foundation. Uh, but otherwise, there's not too much of a difference. Like I have brides who also who like very clean, not too much, just focus either on the eyes or on the lips. And, you know, they like to keep their bridal makeup like that. So I think there's now times have changed. So pretty much it's the same. Like, I wouldn't say there's a huge difference. Okay. There's a question which is like a, a personal tip that she's asking for. Uh, she has a very, skin, very oily skin and uh, okay. she's asking that when I apply makeup, the makeup bursts or especially, uh, and especially on my nose, it doesn't blend at all. And it doesn't set on the nose properly. So is there any tip for that? Uh, if you have oily skin, one thing when you're prepping your skin, uh, you have primers that kind of control the oil. Because what happens is people who have oily skin, is basic. basically it means that your skin is producing extra sebum. So even when you apply foundation, it's going to keep uh, producing that sebum and that is what may be shifting the product from your nose so you do have uh, products in the market like primers in the market that help you control the sebum uh, you know collection that happens so you I would say invest in one and apply it wherever you feel your uh, skin is very very oily mostly it is around the nose on the nose and maybe a little on the cheeks so apply it when you're applying it do not massage it into your skin it literally has to be applied like a layer and left on the skin and then you can apply your foundation when you're applying your foundation make sure you are buying an oil-free foundation you have foundations with a matte matte foundations matte or velvet foundations matte or velvet foundation means that's the finish that they will give you so they'll give you a slightly matter look and not a very dewy or a shiny look. So invest in a foundation like that. And um, last, very important, is to set your foundation. So like how I use the loose powder, make sure you literally press it in the areas where you feel your face gets very oily. And that should take care of uh, the problem that you're facing. Um, the makeup that you did just now, there's a question on that. Uh, if yeah. somebody wants to glam it up, so can they yeah. use a little bit of glitter or is there any other tips? Yeah, you can definitely uh, use a glitter. So what we've done is a matte brown. Instead of using matte browns, you have, uh, you know, like shines and stuff, products which have shine to it. You can just use those instead of using matte browns and it will give you the same uh, effect of what the matte brown will give you but a little more glammed up and you can also use glitter and amp it up and make it more, uh, you know, glamorous. 
ma'am, how to choose palette for skin tones? Um, when you go to, I would say online, it's a bit tricky. But when you go to um, any you know makeup store, make sure you try it. Any product, and I feel uh, you can pretty much work most of the products on all skin. Like you know, this if I'm using this one palette, I can use it on a very you know light tone, medium tone, dusky tone, every tone. Because like I said, you are anyway using a concealer to form a base before you start your eyeshadows. So it doesn't matter what tone it is. I mean, this can go on a variety of skin tones. When you're using the concealer, that is what will clean out your base. Then you spray any eyeshadow, laga do, it will catch on to it. I think uh, going with the similar question, or uh, somebody who's asking, how can we know what what is our skin type? Skin type. How can skin we test our type. skin type? Uh, skin type. So one good thing that we were taught when we were learning makeup is when you wake up in the morning, uh, you would want to just take your finger and do this around your nose. And when you see if there is shine on your no on your finger, you know that your face is slightly on the oily side. If there is nothing, you know that it's normal. And if you find it very dry, where your skin is getting pulled and it's a bit itchy, you know that your skin is dry. So I think this is an easy way to maybe see how what your skin type is. Uh, a lot of people are actually, you know, uh, asking this question. Or uh, I'll just uh, say this: which moisturizer, which brand moisturizer did you use? It's been coming from for a while now. This question. Okay, I use this brand called Embryolis. I don't know if you can see the name. I'll maybe put it up. It's this. I can't. I don't know. It's not, yeah, this can. brand called Embryolis. It's a it's a, a French brand, but you get it on Nykaa. Uh, I would avoid using it if I have oily skin. This is a very very thick uh, consistency cream. So only because I have dry skin, I use it. A very very safe uh, cream to use is Emoline. You get it. It's very easily available. It's very inexpensive, and it goes for all skin types. Uh, it's available in any of your medical shops. It's uh, by this brand. I'm just going to spell it out. Yeah, I've sent it on the chat. It's uh, it's a very, very good cream. I use it for most clients when I know that, okay, I don't know what their skin type is. Sometimes, you know, clients have sensitive skin. So I just use this cream. It, it works really well. Uh, there's one more question. How do you manage both like a makeup artist and a stylist? Uh, as being in, a stylist and being a makeup artist, how do you manage both the jobs? I am not like, I'm not a stylist. I just feel I have kind of got, gained a little aesthetics over a period of time because I work with, you know, so many big stylists in the industry but uh, I'm not I'm not a trained stylist at all I've just gained uh, like I said because as you get into the industry you'll realize that you need to have knowledge about like everything so just keeping that in mind uh, you know I've just gained uh, you know aesthetics over a period of time but I'm not a trained stylist I'm a full full-time makeup artist so yeah if that answers Thank the question you. yes there's one uh, how to work in for open pores. So, uh, open pores again, uh, like I said, you get these uh, pore minimizers, the same that you would use if you had oily skin. Uh, there's a very famous brand called Benefit. They make something called a pore professional, or you have in Mac Cosmetics they have a pore minimizer. It's basically a silicon-based product. So you have to apply it on your pores, literally like that, and leave it. It'll basically fill into the pores and create a really nice uh, base for your uh, foundation or concealer or any product. Somebody has asked, uh, what is your daily skin uh, routine to keep it healthy and hydrated? Um, I keep my skincare routine very, very simple because I feel the more you complicate it, the more you get lazy and then you don't do it at all. So uh, my skincare, normally I make sure that I use a really, really nice face wash. So I have by this brand called either Cetaphil or Aderma. 
they are medicated face washes which is good because they don't lather too much they don't have too much of your uh, soap kind of consistency so it doesn't dry out my skin uh then i use a vitamin c serum i feel vitamin c serum is something that everybody should include in their skin care routine it's very easy uh, there's nothing to it mm, it really helps brighten up your face so vitamin c serum i use a moisturizer most of the times i use either emdrolis or emoline these have been my moisturizers for years now uh i use an eye cream the eye cream that i use in my video which is a bobby brown eye cream so i use that and uh, i use a sunscreen so these are pretty much my four five products that i use uh and the thing that i follow in the night is i make sure i remove all my makeup if i have any makeup on most days i don't have any makeup on my face uh so i make sure i remove all my makeup i pretty much follow the same routine the only thing i use additional is i use a night serum uh by kiehl's um it's like a night repair serum so it just works on my skin throughout the night so yeah i just pretty much do these basic things i think these are more than enough for anybody and once a week i scrub my face and once in two months i get a clean up or a facial depending on what my skin condition is how to deal with are. facial hair see this i feel is a very important question because even i have facial hair i think either if your hair is very thick you have lasers now so you can get it lasered unfortunately for me like my hair is too fine to get caught in the laser so i just bleach my face once in 3 months and i think it just it does the job there are also a lot of people who are into um shaving the face so i think that's another thing that you can do uh but i have been bleaching my face every like once in 3 months once in 6 months and it's been working for me so i just do that there's one question somebody uh, asked that when i do the makeup uh, after uh, after a while it gets uh, the skin gets darker so how to deal with that so i did say this uh basically either there are two things that could be possible either your foundation shade is wrong maybe you're using a darker foundation i mean a lighter foundation shade than your skin tone or then sometimes there are some foundations that naturally oxidize so a best uh, best thing to do is when you're buying a foundation don't be in a hurry tell them to apply it all over your face leave it for about half an hour and uh, you'll know in half an hour whether it's oxidizing or not so i would ideally suggest that you try it before just buying a foundation there's another question which says for illuminating effect can we use mm -hmm. a face serum before makeup uh yes you can use a face serum i wouldn't suggest face oils because face oils are more for um you know working on your skin whether they have some problems or it's for like a massage i wouldn't use that before using uh makeup because it might clog your pores but you definitely can use a hydrating serum if you still want to use a face oil i would mix a little bit of it with your foundation to give that little dewiness on the face uh which uh, setting spray do you use that's Uh, I use. Oh, I don't know. One sec, I have it here. One sec. It's by this brand called Wet and Wild. It's a coconut hydrating spray. It's like a three in one. It's uh, it preps your skin, it sets your makeup, and it refreshes it. So you can. I mean, I just use it for everything. Somebody has asked. Uh... can you give some tips for dewy makeup uh the main key thing for dewy makeup is your well prepped skin it's very very important to prep your skin well if your skin is nice and plump uh, automatically the makeup is going to look dewy so moisturizing uh hydrating the face is very important so you can use a nice thick layer of moisturizer massage it into your face uh before that you could maybe use a face sheet they help um using these illuminating uh you know the illuminator i used you can use illuminating creams like that they really help yeah this one sorry this one is by mac it's a strobe cream 
you get it in different shades i have the gold uh, gold light so using something like this all over the face uh using foundations also which are slightly dewy and powdering only where you need to powder uh when you want to give like a dewy you know illuminated face you don't want to powder it and mattify it so i would only powder the under eyes you know the t zone and i would leave everything else nice and dewy uh somebody has asked uh, you given an answer for uh, how to uh, remove facial hair already with lasers oh. but somebody has asked if there is any home remedy for it home remedy I, i mean i shaving i think a lot of people have started you know shaving on the face but i kind of avoid from things like this because i'm very fearful what if you get like thicker hair so like i said you could maybe just bleach it i just bleach my hair but like a very mild bleach don't use a very strong or a harsh bleach you get a lot of milk bleaches now in the market so i would just use that um and it does the job if you have very very thick hair then i would just get a laser i think now laser is really really good um uh, so you can just get the hair laser then uh to all the ladies there's one uh, guy who's questioning okay. any uh, tips for uh, boys makeup how to do boy makeup boys makeup. uh for boys um i would just say a good skin care should do the job if you really have to apply makeup i would just take a good corrector and apply it in you know areas that you need to maybe suppose you have any you know pimple marks so if you have any warmth under your eyes i would literally just use it for that uh i wouldn't put a foundation um and yeah sometimes if you are going to be in front of the camera or something you can maybe just contour your face a little bit this is what i normally do if i had to do a guy's makeup and uh, groom the brows a little bit and a little bit of lip balm that's it i wouldn't do anything more than that uh there is one uh ma'am how do we get test shoots opportunities who organizes it and uh, if you can tell me about this so uh that's a good question test shoots are basically you will have to do a little bit of research what i did when i started off is uh you know because you end up following a lot of people from your industry you will kind of see how um, you know who is right now you know who are the new photographers who are the new stylists who are the new makeup artists you'll kind of get an idea if you don't then the best way to is go through magazines magazines every uh, fashion shoot or every beauty shoot they will list all the people who have worked on the shoot so you will get an idea of who the photographer was who the stylist was who the makeup artist was you then can connect with them either over email or over uh, instagram now a lot of people connect with each other over instagram and tell them that you would be interested in doing a collaboration uh, so ideally i think for a stylist uh, you would mainly get in touch with a photographer so you can message people on instagram if you have a mood board prepare a mood board share the mood board with them ask them if they would be interested and then work backwards then you kind of get a makeup artist on board you get a hair stylist on board and then when you have the whole thing ready then you start scouting for models uh, you go through different agency websites uh, that represent models and then keeping whatever your look and your whole shoot is in mind you kind of pick a model and that's how everybody comes on board so the main key is to look at pictures look at other people's work like say for example you can even go through my page and you will see different different photographers you can because i tag everyone tags photographers makeup artists everybody you kind of click on their profile and you see what their work is see if you like their kind of work prepare a mood board and connect with them and uh, and then you take it forward from there there's one uh, question it's like a, uh, there are two different people who are asking this one is kanika grover who is asking how to choose makeup for combination skin and another question is from a guy or uh, he is asking mahesh uh, how to correct uneven shades for guys in daily routine so um so kanika to answer your question combination skin is again very similar to like oily skin so i would use a moisturizer which is a more water based or a gel based because it will do the job of hydrating Uh, so wherever your skin is dehydrated it will hydrate it and wherever you have extra sebum collection it will keep it in check and not 
overload with sebum. Uh, again, I would suggest using a, a primer, which is to control the sebum and wherever you feel it gets oily, I would use it there. And uh, yeah, then pretty much follow the normal steps. Like I think the only difference would be when you're skin prepping. So you should understand your skin when you have to skin prep it. Other than that foundation, everything you anyway have to set it. Again, when you have combination skin, set it wherever your skin tends to get oily. And wherever you feel it's dry and dehydrated, you can just let it be. You don't need to set the foundation there. And for uh, boys, if you have uneven skin tone, then it's pretty much what we do for, for us girls also. You buy a good concealer. If you still feel that with a concealer, it's not getting corrected, then you buy a corrector. This would be as far as makeup is concerned. But if you want to get rid of it on a more permanent basis, now you have a lot of uh, Q-switch, they call it Q-switch or tri-beam lasers, which a lot of these dermats, uh, you know, take care of. And that can, over a period of time, you know, even out your skin tone and uh, help the skin look a little more even and clear. Uh, Ma'am, somebody has asked, uh, I will say Panchika Mittal. She has asked, what is the difference between eye cream and face cream? So, uh, the eye cream has specific ingredients which would be used, you know, to hydrate your eyes. So, your eye skin is extremely sensitive. It's way more sensitive and thinner than your face skin. So, whatever products you're using have to be according to what will suit under eyes and around your eyes because all this area is very sensitive. So suppose you're using a face cream which sometimes has scent in it or some kind of fragrance in it, it could irritate the skin. Or if you have something uh, to plump up the skin, if you put it near your eyes, it'll again irritate the skin. That's why they say you don't use sunscreen near the eyes. So the ingredients are the, is the main difference that you have in an in a eye cream versus a face cream. Uh, there's somebody who asked uh, whether what's the difference between a corrector and a concealer. Shavya, if I'm saying your name right. So corrector, basically, you have correctors in different shades. Okay. You get orange correctors, you get a purple corrector, you get a green corrector. So all these correctors are used for different purposes. If you, if you see the color wheel, uh, so when you have under eyes, they are basically uh, like your blood vessels have broken. That's why you get this dark. So your under eyes are not actually brown. They are a shade of blue purple, which kind of goes. It's like your blood color, which is becoming darker. So if you see on the color wheel opposite your blue purple, you will have orange. That's why you use orange to nullify the warmth under your under eyes. Suppose you have a pink red pimple. If you see on the color wheel, opposite red is green. So you would use a green corrector to nullify. So correctors are basically to color correct whatever discoloration you have in different forms on your skin. And concealer is to conceal all of that. Concealer is not going to do, if you have too much of problem skin, like if you have pigmentation or too many pimples and too, many, too much redness on your face, a concealer is not going to do a job you are going to have to use a color corrector to color correct the skin and then you can conceal everything. Uh, I'm a lot of people are asking uh, different questions actually, but which is related to face outline. What kind of nude colors should they select for fair skin? What color for uh, darker skin? What is for the normal skin? Uh, these are what, like lip shades or base? Lip shades. Lip, 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 yes. Okay, so lip colors, I mean, there are a no, lot of nude. nude colors, right? So nude colors, I would say the main trick is to go and try a nude color because today if this is nude on me, it may look dark on somebody who is fairer than me and it may look too nude on somebody who is warmer than me. So the trick is to go and try the lip color. Don't always go by the bullet. Again, if you're, try, if you're buying a lipstick, always try it on the lips because it's very different than what you try on your hand. When you try it on the lips, it's always one shade lighter. So um, there's not one shade that will go for everyone. If, this, if I say that, oh, this nude shade will go on everybody, that's not true. Uh, for a warmer skin tone, they'll have to go with like slightly warmer, you know, maybe browns because that will look nude on their lips. 
uh, for somebody whose fare will have to go lighter than what even I have used on my lips. So I would suggest, uh, I can suggest and, you know, maybe share some lip colors, but I would suggest you try it out because it's very, very tricky when you're buying a nude. Um, and the best way to make a nude pencil, I mean, nude uh, lip color work is by using a pencil. Mm. I suggested this pencil a while back called Spice. It's a really, really cool, it's a really cool color. It goes on pretty much everybody, whether it's a warmer tone or a lighter, fairer tone. You use it as a base and you can pretty much use any lip color on top of that, like nude wise. So I would suggest that. But if you all want uh, specific shades, then I can maybe just share it with Supriti and you, you, know, you guys can have a look at it. Uh, there is somebody, there's a unique question. Somebody who has a lot of facial hair and cannot remove it. So how to set the makeup on facial, uh, you know, hairy skin? I mean, uh, I would say if you have a lot of hair on it and it's dark, then that's a bit tricky because then when you apply your foundation, it starts looking a bit greenish, blackish. So that's why I said maybe using a mild bleach would actually help. But setting it shouldn't be a problem. You pretty much follow the same process of using a, a powder and setting the makeup. Uh, there's one question uh, which is related to the work that you do. That is, what's the most challenging part of this field? Of makeup? Like makeup artists? Uh, I think if you ask me, it's people management because you are dealing with so many different people uh, when you're on a shoot with a model you're dealing with you know like models are actually the easiest people to work with because they are literally you know just doing what they're supposed to do but you have clients who are there so you're dealing with the client you are dealing with it's very difficult sometimes to make the client understand you know they have some vision in mind and you're trying to explain to them you know how it will work as a makeup look so I think that's a big challenge. Then when you are uh, with the celebrity, that is a different challenge because celebrities, you know, they are also at the end of the day humans. They also have a lot of work pressure. You were literally doing your job and then you sit. They have to literally perform in front of the camera. So, you know, sometimes they are not in the best mood. Sometimes they're not feeling well. Sometimes they are a bit snappy. So I think uh, as a makeup artist, it's not only doing your job. You have to literally, you know, spread a lot of... Uh, good energy around them i think that's a challenging bit because sometimes you also have your low days but you can't really take that to work and i think with brides the biggest challenge is because it's like their biggest day and you know they have chosen you out of i don't know how many makeup artists you have to make them feel as comfortable as possible because you can't really dump your views on them it has to be there has to be a balance between what you have in mind for them and what they really want to do so I think it's a, it's a challenge to kind of strike the balance. But yeah, I think these are pretty much like, and working under pressure, sometimes you have very less time and you have so much to do and, you know, things like that. Or you, suppose you're working with a celebrity and you don't have time and there are like five people touching the celebrity at the same time when you're doing your work. So I think it's a bit challenging to be able to stay calm and, you know, do your, do your work and just focus on that. So yeah. Uh, Nirali Shah here asks, uh, ma'am, what is good shaving or waxing for facial hair? Uh, I'm not very sure, honestly, but I have heard uh, shaving is better because uh, apparently, you know, if you don't have very, you know, thick hair, then it kind of takes care of the little fuzz that you get. I think waxing, uh, there's a good chance you might get slightly thicker or longer or darker hair this is what i would say i still would say that you would definitely i would recommend you can you know consult a dermat i feel when it comes to your face uh because sometimes people when they wax their face they tend to get small boils on the face so i would suggest you you know consult a dermat before you do either of the two because you don't want to you know damage your skin uh, there is Pragnya Ayagiri asking, can I use brown eyebrow pencil as a pencil on eyelid? Uh, no, because I think uh, the formulations are different. So you can't. But if you want to basically get something that will do both the jobs, then you can use an eyeshadow as a 
eyebrow filler but don't use an eyebrow pencil on your lid it won't really i mean they're very dry their consistency and their formulation is very different so it might not do the job so that's why uh, there is diksha chande who's asking ma'am when we do when we are doing any concept shoot how to decide what makeup looks good or uh, looks we should do we should do some tips what are things we can consider so basically she's asking if we are going for any concept shoot how you decide which makeup looks good or not so uh like i said when you are doing a shoot it's it's like a team effort so if you have a concept in mind it's obviously something that you should be able to describe so the best way suppose you're doing a print on print or suppose you're doing a floral shoot the best would be to kind of you know research online see a lot of runway looks see a lot of uh, looks on pinterest on google uh something similar to what you have in mind and then you will understand that if you're doing something very printed then you want to keep everything else clean also it depends on what you're doing suppose you are doing a fashion shoot where the shoot is more about the clothes and the fashion styling then your hair and makeup should fairly be on the simpler side because you don't want to take away from the fashion if you are doing a beauty shoot then it's more about your face so it's more about the hair and the face so then whatever you're doing on the face should be slightly more elaborate than what the clothes are so you'll use slightly simpler clothes versus a lot of clothes and then a lot of makeup and a lot of hair everything is going to look very cartoonish so i think um, main key would be referencing the more you look at i think pinterest is a great place to reference we all as professionals reference from pinterest so just keep seeing different shoots look at fashion shoots look at beauty shoots you'll get an idea of what works what don't doesn't work look at all your fashion weeks that happen paris fashion week new york fashion week all these big milan fashion week uh, you'll see a lot of runway looks you'll start up because as a fashion stylist also they are going to be inspired from somewhere so your makeup inspirations should also come from the same source and that will help you um, you know even when you are studying or even now when i'm working i do have like an archive where i keep saving pictures that i come across sometimes on instagram sometimes on pinterest sometimes on some like random post that i see i always archive them because then you know you don't know where you can actually uh you know combine that uh, look so yeah i think referencing is very important uh come to the question of uh, please suggest a sunscreen for oily skin and uh, there is another question which says uh, the the eye uh, cream that you use are other other different for different types of skin no eye cream uh, is mostly like standard that you can use as far as a uh, sunscreen is concerned you can use a gel based sunscreen for people who have oily skin and not a cream based so a gel will um, take care of controlling the oil on the face uh, somebody jinal patel here asks uh, how celebrity take care of their skin uh again they are very very particular uh one main important thing that i've learned from like dipika or janvi uh i think they eat very clean and very healthy because they both uh, believe that what they eat is what they are and i've been doing that for the last 2 uh, years now since lockdown has been on you know i've been eating clean healthy home cooked food so i think yeah uh, diet is very important secondly they always make sure that their makeup is removed because they apply makeup so much pretty much on an everyday basis so they make sure that all their makeup is removed the face is always clean there is no residue they never sleep with makeup and they have a fixed skincare routine and uh, they all consult a good dermat so you know people feel that oh you should have a dermat only if you have some skin concerns but i don't believe that anymore i feel you need to have a skin you know like you need to have an expert on board who can guide you what products to use you don't have to use expensive products but they can make you understand your skin and then you can take it from there on you know what products to use what products not to use what work what doesn't work so yeah that is what they do there is uh, kalpana pandey who is asking uh, any tips for uh, blackheads and whiteheads in the world 
um once a week scrubbing really helps use a face scrub if you don't want to buy one you can even make one at home with like coffee and honey and you know sugar uh but like mild don't do it too hard and when you're doing a scrub try and uh, take a steam because it opens your pores and then you can scrub it and then wash it with cold water so it will close all the pores i think this should help if in case this doesn't help in case you really have a lot i would suggest getting a clean up done from a professional because then they will professionally remove the blackheads uh but reno is asking ma'am what causes wrinkles on our face how to get rid of wrinkles your little um, bit of advice uh wrinkles actually happen because mainly happens one is with age and the other thing is when you don't really look after your skin when your skin loses its elasticity it starts um you know they say when you start losing collagen in the skin that is when your skin starts getting lines and wrinkles so i think start taking care of it from an early age start using uh, you know hydrate your skin that is inside internally and externally so obviously using creams and all is a good thing but also internally like lots of water you know lots of fluids so this will take care of it if you already have them i don't know if you can really get rid of them but at least you can make sure that you don't uh, get them further there is uh, this is guy dhananjay who is asking uh, is there any difference between men makeup product and female makeup product no, does it it's do, do it's the, the same, same job yeah it's the same you don't have separate makeup for men and separate makeup for women you do get now skin care which is separate for men uh, depending on their needs but um, as far as your um, makeup is concerned is the same you don't really have anything different there's a small question how often should we clean our makeup brushes uh if you're using it professionally then i would say um every time you use it you should need to clean them but if you're using it on yourself i would say maybe once in two weeks you can clean the product uh clean your brushes kishika agarwal is asking what is the right age for laser treatment for facial hair uh, i think that a dermatologist would be able to tell you but i i would guess you know 20 and above if you're younger than that i wouldn't really maybe after like 18 because that's when like 16 to 18 is when you know you kind of hit puberty and i think i would say after that maybe around 18 20 is when i would even like consult a dermatologist and try and figure but not younger than that for sure tanika grover again uh, is asking how to rejuvenate yourself after working with all these type of scenario that you just explained uh um, i think I just try and like I try and you know do these face sheets or make these home remedy uh, face masks. I think they really help. You know these face packs you you know your mom and your grandmom and all have. I think I just use that to kind of rejuvenate my skin. And uh, whenever not required, I don't apply makeup because at the end of the day, there are still chemicals on your face. So I wouldn't apply it. on an everyday basis for sure and if i do apply it i make sure that i remove it i hydrate clean my face because any kind of residue is only going to cause damage to the skin so yeah uh ma'am like you just said there were a few questions before this with regards to the same what what is the best uh, way to remove your makeup quickly and what's the best uh, product that you can use um for the face i would say the best product is bioderma you get a bioderma uh, cleanser which looks like this it's very very uh, gentle on the face but this is i would say for the face this doesn't take off your eye and your lip makeup for your eye and your lip makeup you get uh, products which are like this is by neutrogena but they basically half oil half water if you can see is supposed to mix the two and then remove it so you are supposed to take it on a cotton pad and soak your eye it will break all the waterproof makeup all your mascara kajal everything and then it will you know it will come out in like one swipe so use a oil and water based uh, 
remover for the eyes and the lips and for the face i would use like bioderma and after you finish cleaning it then make sure you wash your face with a nice face wash and then hydrate it that should be good enough uh, mansi jain is asking should the concealer be darker or lighter than the foundation um ideally it it's not it doesn't really depend on the foundation like i was saying when i was doing it it depends on what you're trying to conceal so if like i was trying to conceal my under eyes i have to match it to my under eyes it has to be something that will take care of my under eyes situation so the concealer that i use is slightly on the peacher side because then it nullifies whatever correction that i need to do on the under eyes if you don't have any under eye problem then i would take a concealer just to brighten up so i would take a lighter concealer so it really doesn't depend on your foundation it depends on your concealer i mean on your problem area that you want to conceal ah uh, i know there are a lot of questions uh, sukna <laughs> uh, is asking how to take care of eyes during makeup if i wear lens on my eyes every time i put on my lenses before makeup there was a tear in my eye in the middle of the makeup so how to do um a best way is to take a q tip like a earbud and this is where your tear is formed so you just hold the q tip there it will basically uh collect all it will soak all the tear on this so it should take care or even if it's somewhere in the middle you can just hold the q tip and it will soak in all the tear neha kalin has been asking again and again uh, which makeup vanity should be used and please share about your uh, hair care routine hair care i don't really have a routine but i have been uh, last two years i mean since the lockdown i've been oiling my hair which has kind of helped me uh but i don't really have any hair care uh, routine as such and uh, one thing that i do is because i color my hair very often uh i do like these deep conditioning masks that you can either do at home or you can even go to a salon and do it i think they're the only two care, two things that i do and i use a uh, shampoo and conditioner that suits my hair type so i have very dry again a very dry scalp so i use a conditioner and a shampoo that helps that uh which is recommended by my hair stylist mm, yeah other than that i don't really do anything crazy uh dhananjay is asking can you give me some tips for eyeliners for uh, men eyeliners for men i would say like i'm sure you will not put it on the top i'm guessing you'll put it on the bottom and or even if you want to use it on the top i think using a pencil liner is great this one's by revlon and it's it's like a gel liner so once it sets it doesn't really move like even if you try and remove it you won't have any it won't come off so i think using a pencil liner is i think the easiest uh if not you uh, do get gel liners as well by different different brands you can even use a gel liner but it's a bit tricky to use a gel liner because you know your hand should be really steady so i think uh, pencil liners work better Uh, there's Mohit Agarwal who's asking how to clean our face if eyeshadow or eyeliner spreads on the face. Eyeshadow, as in like after doing the makeup. So if you if you feel your pencil, if your pencil is running, that means it's not a smudge-free pencil. So first of all, like try and get a smudge-free pencil because if you get that, then you won't have this problem. Second, you can uh, use an eyeshadow to set. the pencil because then that will kind of lock the cream product third if you do get it then just use a makeup wipe wherever you feel it's running just use a makeup wipe in that area clean it and you'll have to go or whatever area has been you know damaged by it uh, jinal patel is asking at what age should one start using retinol i think it's about i would say about 25 not below that even i started using retinol i after i turned like 30 31 so i wouldn't use it before that 
there are a lot of questions repeated so i'm just scrolling through it yeah and, uh, uh somebody asked about the vanity so for my vanity i literally use a suitcase uh your normal traveling suitcases because i think they're the most convenient and i have different different uh sizes of makeup pouches that i use which i put in the suitcase and carry i don't really have a makeup vanity i think they're the most convenient to use Ms. Khan Shivastav is asking, uh, which lip color will suit on black dress for day party? Uh, a nude, I I would say. A nude would go. A pinkish nude, a coral nude, a nude nude. Any of these would go uh, on a black dress. I'm wearing black, and it's daytime, so yeah. Uh, Some these are Ria. Daryani is asking. We don't use makeup regularly on regular basis, but the quantity of makeup is pretty good. But those product gets expired within six to twelve months. So is it okay to use the makeup product after the expiry? Um, honestly, powders don't really expire. Your compacts or your eyeshadows and all don't really expire. Your only things that you really need to be careful is your um, you know, your foundations and your concealers. any of your cream products so i would say if they've expired i would say do like a little bit of a test on the skin if it's not irritating your skin i think you can go ahead and try it or smell it sometimes lipsticks instantly have a bad smell and you know that they are they've gone bad then you need to please stop using it but yeah if you feel that um it's not irritating the skin you can use it but it's a bit tricky so i would be very very careful before depends also how long you've kept it if it's like one two years it's fine if you're using it after like seven eight years i would say you rather buy a new product um with regards to lipstick asma khan is asking how to shape your lips uh best way is to begin by following your own lip shape i wouldn't try and experiment too much initially then as you get a hang of it you can outline it a little bit uh so but if you want to really get into shaping your lips lip pencil is your best friend uh doing it directly with lipstick will be very very tricky so you should if you're using a red lipstick then try and get a red lip pencil if you're using a nude lipstick you get a nude lip pencil basically you do all the line work with the lip pencil and then go over with the lip color um Ma is asking, please share your first day experience as a makeup artist in the industry. Hmm. Ah, uh, I think my I think my biggest uh, like first experience is when I worked with Ria Kapoor. She's one of the top. Uh, stylist in the industry and she's also sonam sister so my first experience was work, working with her for a vogue shoot where vogue had actually booked me for the shoot and um, yeah i was extremely uh, nervous but i think um, she made me feel very comfortable and the best thing you can do is listen to your client properly because the industry we are in is a very client oriented industry so good the best thing to do is to hear them out clearly and not do what your take on it is try and follow what they want to do and then like i said strike a balance between the two so i was very particular about what she was saying you know what she wanted what works for her what doesn't work for her and uh, yeah i think um, eventually she loved it and we started working a lot after that so one thing that has really helped me through my career is to make sure that i listen to exactly what the client wants whether it's a bride whether it's a model whether it's uh, a celebrity anybody whether if i'm doing it for a friend also try and listen to the brief because if you miss that you can go completely off board and i've seen other people go completely off board and it's been a mess on set so key is to listen to what the client is saying uh, there is uh, kalpana pandey who is asking uh, i'm sorry snehal kale she's asking uh, which sunscreen gel based sunscreen is best for oily skin uh I think Kula has a really good sunscreen. Kula as a brand is really good. It's a little on the expensive side, so Kula is a good sunscreen. If you don't want a very expensive one, then Lotus has some really good sunscreens. Uh, 
And when you're buying a sunscreen, make sure it's SPF 50 and not less than that because in India, less than that will not really help. So at least SPF 50. Uh, there is the Preno again who's asking, what is the one, what is that one product that we cannot work without? Uh, I don't know. I think um, I would say maybe a kajal pencil because I think you can pretty much make someone look good with just one product. Or And the second one would be a concealer. Yeah, I think these are the two products that I wouldn't uh, be able to live without. One person uh, here is asking how to apply eyelash properly, eyelashes properly. How to apply, Megha Tupi is asking how to apply. Uh, that's, that's a different video in itself, but I think the technique, if you want to apply it on yourself, is where you tilt your face a little bit and you try and stick the center first and then the edges. So uh, it's a bit tricky when you're doing it on yourself. When you're doing it on someone else, it's not that hard. Make sure you measure the length of the band matches the length of your client's eye eyelashes. If not, then you'll have to cut it from the corner, not from the front, from the corner. And uh, yeah, you get like you get uh, separate glues. So you apply it on the band, and again, stick the center first, and then the corners. Um. There's one more actually. Somebody's asking what, which lipstick color? Talpana Pandey has been asking which lipstick color would be suitable for wheatish skin. Um, like I said, I think wheat. I mean, like lip colors are something. I mean, I can recommend lots of names, but it's the best that you try it. It's nothing to do with your skin tone. It's more to do with your lip color. Uh, sometimes people might be on the darker side but their lips might be really nice and you know light and pink then any shade will go so i would suggest that you try a lip your lip shade before actually buying it it's very hard to just you know give out names and uh, say that it will definitely work for you uh dipali joshi uh, is asking ma'am my eyes are very small so please suggest some good daily use makeup and especially i think i she's asking about eye makeup what is the best eye makeup that uh is? if your eyes are small i would say try using something shiny on the eyelid because it will open up your eyes even using uh, avoid using kajal uh try using liners on top you know different different colored liners will open up your eye because it will give you um you know like a nice eye shape um, kajal is something that make, might make your eyes sink in a little bit. So yeah, you can you can do pretty much anything other than using a kajal. Dwani Vithalani is asking mask uh, sheet or scrub best to use huh? for daily bit. Um, I think um, on Nika you get uh, there's a brand called Tony Moni or something. Tony Moni, I'll tell you the exact name. They have some really good face sheets, so you can use those. So they're really good. Uh, Preeti, actually, ma'am has already spoken about the dark spots before, so that's why I'm not asking this question. Uh, there is another one indoor house party. Zainab Kamli is asking if there is an indoor house party, what is the makeup look idea that you could ask? Um, you can do something like this, but then maybe I would avoid using black completely. I would maybe just stick to browns or grays and uh, it, it will work for an indoor party as well. Um, or you can do a nice liner with, um, you know, like a thick liner, nothing on the bottom, nothing on the top. Or sometimes you can just curl your lashes, put lots of mascara and do a lip color. Any of these looks actually can work for the day. Thank you so much, uh, Tanvina. I think, uh, guys, uh, she's running out of time. So uh, we are really sorry. We cannot take any more questions right now. But if you have more questions, uh, you can send it to your center directors. They will send it to us. And we will try to answer all the uh, questions that you ask. So um, also, uh, at the end, ma'am, I would uh, just like to say that you know uh, the tips have been really useful and helpful. And there are a lot of questions still coming in in the chat box, as you can see. Uh, 
but definitely we will answer them uh, later. Uh, at the end, ma'am, everybody, I think almost everybody is asking for uh, the list of the brands that we have yeah. used for uh, makeup. So if you could share that with us, we will try and share that with all the students. Yes. Okay? Yes, um, I will so definitely you. share the products and this has been amazing. Thank you guys. You guys were awesome. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this and please feel free. Like she said, you can send out your questions and I will try and answer them as much as I can. Uh, if at all I don't get to answer them, you can even drop me a message on Instagram and I'll be more than happy to uh, answer the questions for you. And I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, session as well, as much as I did actually. Somebody says that you look like Deepika Patakwa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think maybe it's the eye makeup. <laughs> because this is pretty much what she loves to do. So, but thank you so much. Yeah, so I think, uh, I think most of, I, I could not say most of, in fact, everybody has enjoyed today's session. So thank I'm you glad. so much. Uh, it was really, really nice. And maybe the eye learns and uh, tips. So that really helped us a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I hope just, to see you guys again soon. Exactly. I was going to say the same thing, ma'am. I would just like to say this on behalf of everybody that we would love to see you again. So, yes. uh, we will have another session again. Yes, Thank you sure. so much, audience. Thank you. Guys are really nice. And uh, we really appreciate the kind of questions that you uh, came up with. Uh, and uh, mostly, uh, you know, Kadri, ma'am, uh, to uh, uh, all the questions and she could answer almost every uh, question so really thankful for her time and thank you guys for being so patient about it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye ma'am. Bye. Thank you.